In this investigation, we are going to continue exploring inverse functions and build on our previous meaning by also seeing that a function's inverse is a reversal of the original function process. To explore this idea, consider the following context. A particle is three meters away from a wall, and all of a sudden it begins moving away from the wall at a constant speed of two meters per second. And I have this shown here. Let's let t represent the number of seconds since the particle started moving, and we'll let d represent the particle's distance away from the wall in meters. Now we can actually visualize a lot of aspects in the situation, so let's use segments to represent our thinking. First, the particle is three meters away from the wall when it begins moving, so we can use a little segment here to represent the particle's initial distance from the wall. We can also use a segment to represent the distance the particle has traveled since it began moving. And since the particle moves at a constant speed of two meters per second, the expression 2t represents this distance the particle has traveled since it began moving. Now, hopefully you can see that d should be equal to three plus 2t. So the formula that expresses d in terms of t is d equals three plus 2t. We know that d is a function of t, and we can actually call this function f. So f of t is equal to d. We actually have a function formula for this, so f of t is equal to three plus two t. We can use the function formula to determine a value of d given any value of t. For example, let's look at f of 2.5 f of 2.5 will be equal to 3 plus 2 times 2.5. This is equal to 3 plus 5, which is equal to 8. And this tells us that 2.5 seconds after the particle began moving, the particle is 8 meters from the wall. In general, if the particle has been traveling for t seconds, then the particle is f of t, which equals 3 plus 2t, meters away from the wall. What if we imagine reversing this process? So what if we know a value of d, so we know that the particle is d meters from the wall, can we find the corresponding value of t? Let's think about this using our diagram. So suppose we know that the particle is d meters away from the wall, and we want to know how long it's been moving. First of all, the distance the particle has traveled since it started moving, it's going to be equal to d minus three. So you should be able to imagine this. We've got d meters here, we take away three meters, and that tells us how far it's moved since it started moving. So the number of meters traveled is actually equal to d minus three. Since the particle moves at a constant speed of two meters per second, if it's traveled d minus three meters, then it's been traveling for half of that. So the number of seconds the particle has been moving is equal to d minus three divided by two. Or in this case, we can actually write the formula t equals d minus three divided by two. So we see that t is a function of d, but we're still talking about the same relationship represented by the function f, but the input and output variables are reversed. So therefore we have actually been talking about the inverse of f. So we can actually write f inverse of d is equal to d minus three divided by two. Thinking about the same relationship, but with the input and output variables reversed, generally results in thinking about reversing or undoing the original function process. This is the perspective we will be taking in this investigation. A function inverse reverses the process of the original function. So if a function takes a value of x as an input, so if you imagine taking a value of x, inputting it into f, so f takes x and gives us a value of y, the inverse of f will take that value of y and it'll give us back the value of x. So maybe I should have drew it like this. So f takes value of x, gives us a value of y, f inverse will take that value of y and give us the original value of x. 
This is how we will be thinking about function inverses in this investigation.